everyone doing? I'm so, so excited. Welcome to Planning Together. My name is Darian and y'all planning together, you know, every single week I invite an amazing friend on to share with us how they are organizing their life and their heart. So if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, y'all. But y'all, I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Literally, we were late getting on a little bit because we were just chatting it up already. But y'all, Whitney English is our guest tonight. And if you don't know who she is, let me tell you. Whitney mm -hmm. English believes that anyone, anyone y'all can live a beautiful life. She believes that gratitude is the birthplace of joy, that people matter, that love is the answer. And that if you're real, you can't be ugly, that everyone is creative and some of us just have forgotten it and that it is worth trying to be the best version of yourself each and every single day, y'all. And if you want to get a little bit more technical, listen, she got a whole resume and I'm about to let y'all know what it is because she, like she's worthy of this resume, y'all. So she has bootstrapped two businesses to seven figures, has a degree in interior design, has studied management at Parkins in New York City and has worked has had her work featured in O Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, y'all, and The Today Show, not just once, but twice. She was featured as County Country Living's Magazine's Woman's Entrepreneurs in 2008. And one of her favorite dreams that has come true, though, is that she has married her husband, David, and has three children. She nightly dreams, y'all, of a perfectly organized office. Can y'all light up the comments and help me welcome the amazing and beautiful Whitney English to planning together. That was hey. so sweet. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, I'm a little bit embarrassed now, um, but thank you. And it's so exciting to be here. I'm Thanks so glad you are here. So glad you were here. How has your day been going, Whitney? It's been crazy. It's mm -hmm. been a mic drop kind of day. We started off with um, a marketing call. I had a marketing call with my marketing uh, the gal who runs my social media and then went to a business partner call and then went to more calls and then went to spreadsheets and then recorded a podcast. And I, this morning I looked at my husband and I was like, I've been eating so healthy lately. I don't need a nap. And I texted him at two o'clock and I was like, miss, I don't need a nap anymore. Needs a nap. And so I squeezed a little one in cause I knew we were going to talk tonight. So oh, it's I just been too. busy. Did. You did? <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. I, I was like, oh, I'm getting tired. I need to nap. And I told totally, I believe in that. Like nap yeah. is a whole ministry. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. I do feel like I don't have to take a nap as often when I am eating healthy, which is an interesting observation. Um, but I do love a nap. I do too. I just love the mm -hmm. space. I don't know. I just, that's, oh, that's one habit that I have done with me is napping. <laughs> we were talking about Wait. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah oh that's one thing I do do consistently <laughs> yes yes like sleep is your first line of defense you've gotta you've gotta get your sleep in but um I, yeah I full-on don't have a problem with that habit either <laughs> yeah and I'm glad we're we're not the only ones because the people in the comments are like well some are just saying I wish I could take a nap I know okay how can you restructure your life let's workshop this girls how can we restructure your life so that you can like, I don't mean to oversimplify it, but uh -uh. Um, if that's your dream, you know, we were waiting and we were talking about what's your dream? Um, like in Pretty Woman, I just love it. And I can't say what's your dream. I have to say what's your dream because that's what's the way the guy your <laughs> woman said it. If, if, if your dream is a nap, let's just, let's just workshop your life. Let's figure out how to squeeze it in. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, see, well, you already know. It's about, listen, it's about to be so good tonight. Like just. You're just, okay. Um, okay. All right. I've got my notepad here. I already have a question written down because we were talking so much before it started. So <laughs> in case we start chasing rabbits. Perfect. 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 I've, I've got questions for you too. Okay. okay. Oh goodness. Y'all she got questions for me. <laughs> well, I'm not ready. Okay. So to warm us up, I want to know Whitney English, the planner and y'all, uh -huh. I got, you know what time it is. It's like this or that game that we have. Okay. And I added a few questions, so y'all be ready to answer them. All right, Whitney, I want to know, are you a weekly or a daily planner? Both. 
Is I'm allowed to say that vertical? You are. You are totally allowed to say it. <laughs> vertical or horizontal? Vertical. Yeah. Okay. Do you like to go to Target or Michaels for your planner supplies? Uh, I have not set foot in a Michaels in <laughs> years. So Target, baby. Yeah. Oh, you call it Target too? Oh. Oh, just for fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always called it that. Okay. I don't know oh. French or anything, but <laughs> <laughs> colorful or neutral? Neutral. Okay. Yeah. Multicolor pins or multicolor highlighters? Multicolor pins. Okay. Are you decorative or functional? Ooh. That, that's the age old debate. It's like form or function, you know? And as I, I am first and foremost, a designer of all things. Uh -huh. um, and so, you know, it has to be functional, but yeah, I think my whole mission in life is like, why shouldn't it be beautiful as well? Uh -huh. So I got to start with the function though. I think okay. mm -hmm. you like to plan at your desk or on your couch floor. The floor. I, I, I sit on the floor. Because I know you like to work on the floor a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I should have my husband take a picture of me sometime. I look like a, like an actual child, <laughs> like leaned up over the computer. You know, it, it, I'm not going to share that photo with anybody because I'm sure it's not <laughs> appropriate, but um, I don't, there's just something about like, I've got this whole space and I can spread out and, you know, Mm -hmm. I, I do use a daily and a weekly and um, I didn't ever think I would, but I, that's, that's my process right now. That's what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. there's just room for it all. I love that. I do with the floor. You do have like, like optimal space capacity. Yeah. And just yeah. I get that. I get that. Cause I like mm -hmm. journaling and getting all my like things out when I'm journaling. On yes. The mm -hmm. there's a lot of things. Yeah. Lots of things. Okay. Yeah. I got a few more questions for you. Okay. Here's our washi tape. Stickers, mm -hmm. but not that many, but, but stickers. Not that many. Okay. Yeah. And then my last question, which I think you just answered, is mm -hmm. you a one planner or a multiple planner? It turns out a multiple, multiple, multi. 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 <laughs> yeah. Multi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you have both a weekly and a daily. How do you, do. Kind of, what's your planner like system like? Oh, I wish I, I don't think I've got him sitting here. Um, so, we came out We the Whitney English planner company has been around a little over a year at this point. Mm -hmm. So last November when we debuted a planner, um, I knew what I wanted it to look like. I knew I wanted to, you know, I wanted to kind of steer clear from the coil, the brass coil, the mm -hmm. gold corners thing. I wanted it to be, feel luxurious and, and high end, but still, you know, with an affordable price tag, I know planners are an investment that we all make and mm -hmm. love making in our lives. And so I wanted it to be something that was like beautiful that you could put on a desk that wouldn't clash with the decor in your room. And, um, and I just thought it could be a weekly. And so we created a weekly planner and I've been using that planner hardcore for probably about a year and a half now, like since I got the first official sample uh -huh. and, um, maybe longer than that, maybe that's about two years at this point. And so, um, I don't know. I don't, don't ask me to do backwards math on dates. <laughs> You asked me earlier, like, what can we not talk about? I will say like, oh, it's been a month and it's been 16 months or something. So anyway, so I started doing that. And then this year we debuted our daily planner, which is actually more of a journal than a daily planner mm -hmm. uh, because it's not dated. And I have found that I like to keep my schedule in my weekly. And then I use my daily for work notes on a regular okay. basis. Okay. And okay. it's working really well. I love that. Okay. So since we're talking about your planner, let's just talk about it. And, okay. you know, I'm going to show it. You'll see the comments pop, but yes. Okay. Cool. Are so beautiful. Um, and I completely agree with Hannah here. Um, my question is, tell us a little bit about the different planners that Whitney English is offering this year. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now I am going to have to grab one. Hang on. They're okay. right here. They're well, grab your planners. Hi, Carla. Hi, Cynthia. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Jeanette. Now I'm just saying hi to all the people because y'all are just so Say hi. <laughs> Hang on. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab my daily. <laughs> How's your day going? Let me know. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you. I see all these, like, 
You guys are saying my hair looks cute and y'all saying I look good. Thank y'all. Y'all so nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, y'all are so funny. I'm good. Back. How are you? You guys, I'm doing pretty good. Like today's been a good day. I got, like I said, I got a nap in, which is great. If I can get a nap in, then it's a good day. So, so far, mm -hmm. it's going good. Happy hump day, y'all. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we, we have two main products. Um, one of them is our daily planner, which <laughs> so is, you know, is coil. This is our best selling pattern right now is this antelope. It's neutral. So it goes with almost any decor. I, my background is in interior design. And I noticed that as we, as I was doing some interior design work over the past five years, that bright colors don't work in houses like muted colors. And, and you'll start to, I mean, yes, there's like the pop of this or the pop of that, but mm -hmm. every, you know, we have gray sofas or neutral, you know, tan linen sofas and stuff like that. So I, there's sort of a muted down to all of the colors in the products so that they kind of blend with different decor. Oh, sweetie, I don't, I don't need it. You can take it. Thanks. My kids are bringing me pancakes and bacon. Oh, I don't need, I already ate. Yeah, <laughs> so sweet. Um, okay. And so then we've got our, well, I can, I'm really, really, can I say proud, humbly, like I'm humbly yeah. proud of our, um, our layout on the daily because we've got, a big, a big column here where you can make notes or make a list. That's what uh -huh. I do. And then there's a small schedule column. So it's a real, it's a game changer because I, I don't usually have a full schedule, yeah. but I do have a full page of notes. Uh huh. Um, and then up here at the top, you can enter the date. And then we have a little spot for you to write your goals for the day with a little heart beside it. Yes. And then there's a daily affirmation right here. My team and I wrote all these affirmations. So there's a little positive thing from us to you on every single day. So it's a little oh, bit different I love than that. other daily planners on the market. And then the weekly planner, we call this our week on one page and it's got the uh, the dates a little you can keep your schedule right here mm -hmm. and then tons of room for list making in this because I am I use my planner for keeping a record of mm -hmm. things instead of having like little pieces of paper floating around my office I'm like and I think that's why I like the daily so much so this is my actual daily mm -hmm. and um I'll show you just a few pages um I mean, this is notes. This is just like notes for writing the book um, that I'm writing right now. So I've got a couple appointments right there. And then, you know, I just have that. I, I love it. I never get through checking all my water boxes, though. I forget. Like, yeah. I'll drink a whole thing of water, but I don't. It reminds me to start drinking water. <laughs> Does anybody ever check all their water boxes? Y'all let us know in the comments. Do you guys check all your water boxes? Has Have you ever discussed this with anyone? It's actually an interesting <laughs> question, right? I don't know. I don't. Okay. I just check if I drink water the day versus actually checking okay. if I drink enough water for the day. Yeah. I, I don't. I just confessed that. I wasn't really thinking before I spoke. I just was like, we'll just. Okay, but we'll turn it into a conversation. Anyway. Ah, I love it. And yeah. you also came out last year with the health planners as well. Yeah, we do. Um, this is so cool. I was talking about that. I was on a podcast today. These, can I tell you what podcast it was? Yes. Because they were the sweetest girls. It's yeah. called All Things Good. And it's just these two gals. Do you know them? No, I'm just like curious because I don't want to in the comments. They just talk like how we're doing this right now. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I think these are my people. Like I need to listen to this podcast. Okay. So anyway, they were asking about our wellness planners and we do, we have this whole health line. It's, it's really cool. The reason that this came about is because my business partner and one of my dear friends, Jonna, mm -hmm. um, is a nurse practitioner and she received a diagnosis and mm -hmm. you know, no, nothing terminal or anything, but it was enough to change her life and she needed tools to track it and she couldn't find anything out there. And we became friends and I was like, you need to do that. She was like, I don't want to do it alone. I want you to do it with me. And I was like, I don't know. I don't, you know, and, but anyway, we have, we did. And, um, they're beautiful. They're great products. We do have a launch coming up. Um, We've actually got 
it's probably the launch. The products are probably going to debut in March, and I I can probably I'm not supposed to tell you what they are, but we've got some really cool health stickers so that you know for anybody who um, it's almost like this is a collection of planners that I hope you never need. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's kind of been like an interesting thing to to sell because it can help someone who has a serious diagnosis mm -hmm. um, and it can encourage them. And, you know, it's created by a nurse who knows how to take care of people and how to track her own issues and illnesses and stuff. But um, so, so they, they, they will perform heavy duty, but they're, mm -hmm. um, they're also just great for wellness tracking. I typically use mine. Um, this is our daily wellness tracker. It's got a spot to write how you feel today. Um, if you've had any pain, what medications and stuff you're taking. I, I use mine for like when I am not well or my kids uh -huh. are not well, mm -hmm. somebody needs to explain allergy symptoms or cold. I typically hit something, some ailment from all sides. You do like essential oil and then you do like homeopathic and then you uh -huh. do Sudafed and Dayquil. And I mean, <laughs> I have to write, if I start medicating my children, I have to write it down so I don't forget it. <laughs> I and that's that. when, yeah. So this is my little stack. Yes, right such a pretty stack. And Planner State of Mind says, as a special needs mama, they look like they would work really well for special needs families too, and they will. Yeah, I yeah. they're beautiful. They're gorgeous, and they're yeah. so intentional. And I love. I use the appointment book for when I go to doctor's appointments now uh -huh. because it mm -hmm. literally has all the information that I need. Mm -hmm. And it's just they're. It's so just. Like, yeah. There's oh, wow. a, amazing. Yeah, there's a I've got I've got them all here. Um yeah, there's all these different little books. One of the products we have is a folio that's coming all this You're fits into. The book. Yes. So um and these are A5 size, so they're mm -hmm. a standard size. Um, but the folio helps like if you have to go to a doctor's appointment and just you need to take all this information with you. But mm -hmm. this is like a, we call it the medical organizer, but it's a little bit like a passport. It's a, it's a guided walkthrough of you know, like your health history, um, emergency contacts, any type of diagnosis you received, any like your immunizations, which that's a whole thing right now. Um, mm -hmm. Medications, supplements, ER visit. I mean, just, just tons and tons of pages. And so yeah. it's almost like, you could go to the hospital and when we designed this, we had no idea that a pandemic was going to hit, mm -hmm. but you could go to the hospital and just hand this to somebody. And yeah. Anyway, I'm going to start crying again. <laughs> Stupid pandemic. I know. It's so been rough. Rough. And I think just having like, but having like the tools and like mm -hmm. that particular planner has brought a sense of peace. Um, and I have a family member who uses it as well. And I know it's brought a lot of sense of peace and clarity, even in her own life. And so it's just, I just love it. And I just oh. think about like creating that. Cause again, that's something that we all need. Yeah. Um, and also a lot of people said they, they do like some say, yes, I can't live without water and they check it off. Oh, okay. Um, we got okay. it. I started off strong, but forgot to check it off by the end of the day. <laughs> that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Planner Wire says yes. They y'all are on it. I love. Yeah, Hannah does. Okay, Jeanette. Jeanette says she doesn't. She doesn't check it off every single day. Thank you, Jeanette. Not like long. at least one check. Like, do you at least start the check? That's all <laughs> I ever get is one. But it it tells me to go drink water. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I love that mixed responses. Oh my goodness, so many mixed responses. Okay, so I know you call yourself a serial entrepreneur. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit why you why would you call yourself a serial entrepreneur? Because I'm unemployable. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, but kind of really, I don't know. It's mm -hmm. it's just I've, I I the other day like I found my one of my first business cards my mom was unpacking some stuff and she found my very first business card, which I think I printed on a dot matrix printer and it was like perforated and it was called stardust. I was like going to hand letter things for people. This is way before the hand letter. This is 1995 you guys. So this is way before hand lettering was a thing. So anyway, 
I, I just, I was just always the kid who was like babysitting and I'm not, it's not that the money motivates me, but I love owning my own time. Mm -hmm. And I'm, we were kind of talking about this in, uh, before this, but um, I also am just allergic to monotony. And so the idea of like getting up and doing the same thing every day and going to the same place and, mm -hmm. you know, I could like be a runner for somebody. Like I could probably like pick up dry cleaning and just like run errands for somebody all the mm -hmm. time just to give me something different to do every day. But yeah, not a desk job. Not a desk yeah. job. Mm -mm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So with that being said, I, I guess my question is, are you doing what you always wanted to do? I am. I am not necessarily planners. But I've always wanted to write a book. I made a goal list when I was 16. And that was the second thing on the list. And so that's finally happening. It's in some ways, I'm, I'm going to be 42 in a couple of weeks. And so in some ways, it feels like it's taken a long time to get there. Because I've done a lot. I've, I've been an entrepreneur my entire adult life since I was 22. Um, so for 20 years. But um but the writing a book thing feels like it's coming at the right time. I just, I believe in being patient. Like um, my friend's grandma always used to tell her what's meant for you will not pass you by. And I, maybe there's something with age and experience that comes, but even in this pandemic, when we're limited on so much of what we can go, you know, we can't go anywhere. We can't, I mean, we can, but at what risk and, mm -hmm. and the risk to our families and stuff. So we're all stuck and um, it's easy to feel like life is passing you by, but I just, I just remain optimistic and hardcore hold to the belief that there are things that we are all meant to do and we will have the opportunity to do those things, even if they seem impossible. So there's I that. that. I just love that. <laughs> I love that so much. And, okay. So, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just taking that in. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just like, not that in. like it's, and I just, I think that having like a positive mindset is so important. Um, having a growth mindset is so important. So um, I want to take that message to people and, um, you know, I think I would love to, if I'm really dreaming big, like there's probably I don't know. I was going to say like a stage and like, a, like go speak on t for Tony Robbins or something like that. But then I was uh -huh. like, do I really want to do that? And then I was like, would it get my name on a beach somewhere? Like <laughs> Whitney's beach. Maybe, maybe I would do it. But then we were also talking, we're Enneagram sevens, both of us. Uh -huh. So it has to be fun. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to be an adventure. I don't want to do it if it's not fun. I'll do fun for free. Yeah. But, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but the not fun stuff falls in the work category. And then we got to talk. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. How y'all just go? Y'all, they're talking about me in the comments, Whitney. They're, they are. They're what are they saying? saying about me. Like, my friend Shandi just says, Do I even know what a dot matrix printer is? And I don't. Oh. You're talking about your business cards? I don't. But Shandi, you didn't got to put my business out there that I don't know uh -huh. what it is. Now I got to go look it up. And then my mom, she's here. Uh -huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Mom, you you uh, tell me my age and everything. Thanks. Uh, you were born in 1994, so that means that about the time I was printing my first business card. Uh huh. You were a baby. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. So with your dreams, I guess. Uh -huh. How would you say that your dreams and plans have evolved since you got started with your since your first business and your first yeah. entrepreneur endeavor? So I just, <clears throat> whenever I started my first business, it was less about, it was right after 9-11, pretty much. So I had just graduated from college, wanted to be an interior designer, but that market tanked on that day. Mm -hmm. So that was one of those curveballs that life throws at you and you just figure out something else to do. But, and I would say that my first career, my first business was a wholesale stationery company. It was really about survival for me at the time. Mm -hmm. I was single, 22, and it was like, how, you know, couldn't find a job in the thing that I had a degree in. I was like, how am I going to pay the bills? Is mm -hmm. I mean, that's how that company got started. I had this credit card debt. And I remember sitting, I was living at my parents' house and I was sitting there calculating how much, how many pieces of stationery I needed to sell to pay off my credit cards. And okay. it ended up providing an income for me 
Um, and so that was a huge blessing. It went really well until it didn't. And then it went down in a ball of flames. We ended up filing bankruptcy on that company. And that was a really dark time in my husband's and my life. We call that the year of epic failure. Mm -hmm. And I don't like reliving it, but um, like in my head, mm -hmm. uh, I learned so much. And I think that I saw something the other day that I loved. I think it was like every pocket has a silver lining, you know, like you find yourself in these pockets in life that mm -hmm. you feel stuck and like, you can't get out and like, what are you going to do? But there is, there's a silver lining. And normally I feel like I find it in gratitude and then a lesson, like, what can I, this is free. Like hard stuff is a free education. Like I have a PhD in that's good. How to, how to file hard bankruptcy. on a free education. Mm. Yeah. So, um, so I think so. And then, so when the company failed, I started day designer to kind of dig us out of the bankruptcy hole. It, it didn't end up taking off quite with the speed that I wanted it to. So we weren't able to dig out that quickly, but the lesson I learned with the first company was just hold things loosely. And so mm -hmm. I, you know, we came up with the trademark, we came up with um, you know, the branding and all that stuff. And one day I wrote a blog post once the trademark was filed. And I said, if anybody would be interested in collaborating or purchasing the company, I would be happy to, you know, sell it or collaborate. And somebody uh -huh. sent me an email and said, have you ever thought about having your products in Target? Would that interest you? <laughs> like, what on earth? Like, and so Target. Anyway, and Target. Yeah. I just was like, so, the way I set goals is a little bit different mm -hmm. than we were kind of talking about this too. I, I actually don't set goals. I, I do have a big picture of a vision of where I want to go. I do write out individual things, but I don't track anything to a certain point because mm -hmm. I don't think I could have tracked target. Like if that mm -hmm. was my goal, like I want my products to be in target. It was never my goal. Was it something that I daydreamed about at one point in time? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a product designer, like you dream about where it's going to go and where it's going to end up and stuff. But I just don't think there was any way to like break down that goal into steps that would have, there were no steps broken down for that. It's just, there's this dream and then action. Like those are the only two things you need, you know, to, uh -huh. I'm a little, I'm a little bit uh, of, of a risk taker. I don't know. Are you as well. Are you afraid to take risks or are you like, we're just going to try it, see what happens? No, I jump in with two feet and then deal yeah. with the consequences after, which <laughs> yeah, got sometimes, yeah, sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Right. Uh -huh. um, so I, I'm the same way. So I'm never afraid to take a risk. And um, I love, I love Jesus. Um, and I think the way he approached life on earth was like a little bit contrarian, a little bit counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. Everything was just like, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So anytime something doesn't make a whole lot of sense, I'm like, but maybe that's the way. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> like, and that requires faith too, you know? Yes. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Faith is a huge part of my life. Just knowing that we have this, we just moved into this house. Um, I don't know, like, was it six months ago? And it seems like, I don't know. It seems like forever and then 24 hours all at the same time um, just because of the pandemic. But so we've got this bathroom and it's just not it's just like the tile didn't match when they built it 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then I one night I decided that it would be fun to pull the sink out. So now there's like exposed plumbing. And then I decided it'd be fun to like try to paint the tile on the floor. So it's like halfway painted. And it's it's a total seven project. Like I just started it and then left it. And one day I just, I told David, my husband, I was like, we just need to demo that. And he goes, well, where are we going to get the budget, like the money and the tile to put it back together? Cause we're also mm -hmm. finishing a kitchen remodel right now. And um, I was like, I don't know, David, but we'll find it. Like I'll be on Facebook marketplace and somebody will be like, I have a ton of tile for $10. And I'll be like, found the tile, go pick it up. And he knows <laughs> I'm not kidding. He, he, it, it happens. So anyway, I, what rabbit did I chase to get us here? <laughs> I love it. I don't even talking know. About like how the, your dreams and plans have evolved over yeah. the years and like day designer. And then it got into target and then it went. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Sometimes. So here, let me rise it. Sometimes you just have to demo it 
first, like before the plan is in place. You just mm -hmm. have to demo the bathroom, mm -hmm. like, and trust, like, have the faith that the plan will appear. You have to be mm -hmm. resourceful too. I, yeah. I would say I'm, I'm very resourceful. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Love that. Okay. So <laughs> Jeanette said no risk, no biscuit. <laughs> no risk it, no biscuit. Okay. I am writing that one down. I love this. I love this so much. Uh-huh. Well, then Cynthia says, I love that. And she wants to embrace that mindset. She says, uh -huh. so not a risk taker. So my question for you is for my non-risk takers, what advice would you give them? Um, I would say, mm, I, I mean, I think, I think risk taking or like the, like someone who's risk averse, I, I think that stems from like a fear of not being in control. Mm -hmm. And not not having control over the outcome of things, but I just I've learned that when you hold things loosely, it mm -hmm. it just leaves room for God to work. Like, um, so it, it, I I think it requires a lot of for me it requires a lot of trust in a higher power, mm -hmm. um, because I could be a control freak if I wanted to. I just I've screwed up my my plans enough to be like they're crap. Like my, you're like you could put a plan on a piece of paper, but really at the end of the day, there's so many outside, like life is always going to throw you a curveball. So there's like a good chance, like better, better chance than not that that plan's not going to come to fruition exactly the way it looks. So, I mean, we're really not in control of anything anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm all about having a dream. And I think I fully believe that like God puts gifts and dreams in our heart and, you know, if you, uh, something I heard one time or I picked up along the way is just, if you don't steward it, you're going to lose it. And that kind of pushes me out of that comfort zone. Sometimes adventure, like the lure of like, oh, it's going to be fun. Like that mm -hmm. pulls me out every time. So like, if you could figure out what your, if you're risk averse, find out, figure out what your motivation is. Like, look at your Enneagram, find out what, what drives you and then use that to, to pull you into and just take a class, learn something new. Why not? Why not? I love yeah. that. I yeah. love that. <laughs> now, what, what are, what have you been learning? Um, I have been learning how to write a flipping book with chapters, <laughs> like a real book, not pictures, chapters. Um, chapters. yeah, like a big girl book. Um, it's hard. And it's been, yeah, we've, we've had to figure out how to do that. So I'm actually taking a course on that in mm -hmm. a month, um, how to market and how to write. And um, I'm on chapter six. So it's not like there's no progress. There are 13 chapters. Um, so I feel good about where I am. And I, I've been learning a lot about remodeling. I have a degree in interior design, but a degree in hands-on mm -hmm. experience are two totally different things. And over the past year, I was blessed with a handful of local clients and really got to, to do hardcore design work. So I figured out what parts of that I like and what parts I don't. Mm -hmm. um, and right now it's just, I feel like I'm kind of in a hustle mode too right now. Like mm -hmm. I just, I'm, I'm kind of getting up and I've demoed the bathroom and now I just have to get up every single day and just like do a little bit more to put it back together. That's where I am. Okay. I love it. Yeah. So you, okay. So now I'm like, my, my wires are going. Okay. So you do a little bit of interior design. You mm -hmm. have Whitney English, you have your whole business. And then mm -hmm. you have like, like my question is like, mm -hmm. in a way I'm like, how, and you're writing a book. Mm -hmm. How, and then you have mm -hmm. a whole family, a whole husband, mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. Like how mm -hmm. are you, I guess, balancing the busy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my husband is the real MVP. Mm -hmm. Like he, he, he manages all the kids, everything. So couldn't do it without him for sure. Like I'm like, he's nine years older than I am. And I'm like, you need a COVID vaccine. Cause I am screwed. If something happens to you, <laughs> don't go anywhere. I'm super paranoid about that right now. Anyway. Um, he's on the list. He's going to get there. Um, so 
heart goals is the method I use to balance my life. It's a five letter acronym. Mm -hmm. The it, H is help yourself. It's all about your self care. You ha it's the, that's the foundation for everything else in life. You're okay. not going to be able to accomplish your business goals. If you have not made sure you had enough sleep, water, nutrition, and like gotten some movement in. So normally if I'm feeling like my day is going crazy and I just, if it's, if things start to feel out of control, I go back to my list, my heart list uh -huh. and just start asking and right. I mean, usually in that first section, in the first letter, I can be like, Oh, well, I need to go do this or this, you know, uh -huh. you know what you need to do. Like our bodies, you know, speak to us and tell us what we need. So the E stands for empower yourself. That's all about your emotional, uh, spiritual and intellectual. That's like that component of your life. I'm uh -huh. struggling there right now, but I have a pile of books. Um, and I know that what I need, I know what I need to do. I need to quit scrolling my phone at night and read 10 pages. It's so hard. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Tell me about it. When I even do the whole timer thing and oh, yeah. you know, I just press ignore and keep it, keep it moving. I'm like, this, ain't, this, see, this ain't helping. Like, uh -huh. Yeah. And, oh, let me know when you figure yeah. out the secret to that. I, you know, I, I will, if I, and that's the crazy thing about writing a book about this, this method, this heart method is it uh -huh. really forces me to articulate like, you know, it can't, it doesn't live in ambiguity up here in my head anymore. Like I mm -hmm. am having to spell out. And so that's been a great, that's been a great experience so far as well, just because all this stuff benefits us. It's just stuff that's hard to do. So mm -hmm. for me, putting an acronym makes it a little bit easier to at least like when life is going off the rails, be like, okay, what's wrong? Like diagnose, like, yeah, oh, this is what is wrong. I need to write that down for the book. Diagnose. Go ahead. Write it down. <laughs> <laughs> needs to be star book. Okay. And then so E or so E is empowering yourself. That's the okay. mental angle of things. A is all your people. Okay. Um, you know, I would love to right now be reading to my kids. I spent a year after I sold my company and read to them. And it, my uh, two youngest were three and four at the time. And it full on, we read a thousand books in one year and it taught them to read, like mm -hmm. reading to them. Like if you guys have babies, I don't care how young they are, read a thousand books, keep a list. Your children will know how to read. It's amazing. It was just the most amazing time in our, our lives. I'm so grateful for that year. So um, all your people, then your resources and your responsibilities. So it's like the stuff and things like you got to change oil in your car, you have to get the air filters changed in your house. Like if you don't steward something wisely, you'll lose it. So it's all about that. I, I like house stuff. I don't like budget stuff. So that's my least favorite category. And then the last mm -hmm. one is your trade and career. So I prioritize that last. And that is where if I am going to use the smart goals system, it works in that category. Uh -huh. But smart goals was um, created to actually be a, um, it was a, it was it debuted in a business management journal in 1981 as a way for managers and company owners to monitor and improve employee performance. It was never intended to be a personal goal setting system. And so I don't I, I we use it in business and at work uh -huh. to help us track and, you know, things like that as a team. But um, but I use heart goals for everything else. I use heart goals for balancing my life. I use heart goals for achieving my dreams. I, and somebody even said the other day, like, how do you set your goals? And I was like, I don't really set them. I just live them because mm -hmm. the, we all want the same. It heart goals is based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We all actually mm -hmm. have pretty much the same five goals every year. Someone's going to set a goal about money or like a promotion, some type of career thing, uh -huh. maybe move to a different house or want to buy a new car or, you know, just an acquisition of something, a uh, better relationship, um, you know, learn, some, learn a new thing or get closer to God, you know, something mm -hmm. that improves your like mental capacities or, you know, get healthier. Yeah. Same five goals. Yeah. And so, um, so it's just, it's like, and we know it. the steps are all the same to get there. If I want to mm -hmm. run a marathon, I'm going to have to start with sleep, water, nutrition, and movement. Mm -hmm. So just programming my, me, my brain, my life to do those basic things is daily putting me in a prime position and like the, you know, it's optimizing me to take advantage of opportunities when they come and enable me to do these adventurous, fun, crazy things.
Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. I just, have to <laughs> because I can't wait because the one thing and I'm so glad mm -hmm. you put this, but I'm so excited because I know next month you're going to be our major yeah. over at wild university. Uh -huh. and we'll be diving more into heart goals. Yeah. And you're going to be helping us with our own goals and what it looks uh -huh. like to like implement this and essentially uh -huh. live our goals. I'm so uh -huh. excited. So y'all, if you, Make sure you join Wild University because Whitney's going to be our major. It's like, it's now we get to learn from Whitney. So now I can say this is what I'm learning this week. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm excited too. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now I'm curious because you, I know you had said you had sold your business. Were you referring to mm -hmm. Data Planner? Mm -hmm. What was that process like? Was it hard for you to sell it? Mm -mm. Or were you just like, I'm ready to let, like, yeah. Wait? So we had, um, I had a friend who was acting as our external CFO mm -hmm. and he and his firm walked us through it and held our hands. One of the questions they asked me from, they started working with me before we, well, before we, years before we sold it. And so they started with asking the question like, well, what's your goal with hiring us to help you with the business? And mm -hmm. I said to sell it. And so they knew that was, that was a goal, like a business goal was to sell the company. And we didn't know how that was going to happen. Like th there was no way to break that down, but they had statistics and information. And so they, you know, we, I would talk to them every week and, and we would just, we worked on getting the company into good shape so that whenever someone was interested in buying it, we could present them with, you know, sound financials and things like that. Um, once we got an offer, um, once we got the offer, it, things changed and all of a sudden it was we hit this point there there were a lot of lawyers <laughs> and a lot of phone calls and a lot of back and forth with a bunch of people and i hit this point where it was like a i don't i don't know what they called it merger fatigue or something like that mm -hmm. where i just was like and it got hard in my personal life too because while it was happening i couldn't talk about it there wasn't, mm. you know, there were, there were non-disclosures. And then there was also the chance that it wouldn't happen. I mean, they had up until the day we closed, just like you would close on a house to, to back out. They could have totally backed out. And um, so I couldn't talk about it. And so I was working on it. It was similar to the process of like filing bankruptcy. I'm learning all this legal stuff that is just not my strong suit. And, um, but it's still good to know. I love, I love life experience lessons. Um, but it was just, I was getting up every day working so hard on this and I couldn't talk to anybody about it. So mm -hmm. it was, it was, it was an interesting time. I don't have any plans to sell my current company. I really mm -hmm. want to build like Whitney English as a brand and help people make their lives beautiful in whatever capacity I can, hopefully home and planning and a um, little bit of like mind work on the heart goals thing. So that's, oh my goodness, that's where we are now. I love that. Okay, you guys, listen, I can clearly talk to Whitney all night. So if you guys have questions, because I know y'all do, start putting them in the comments. Um, any questions for Whitney, definitely start putting those in the comments. Shonda said, yes, I need more heart over smart goals. Yeah. I love that, Shonda. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's life changing. Lawyers are such a <laughs> um, I mean, it was just, it was like all that legal stuff. It's like, oh my gosh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, so okay. We got people who are going to be joining us next month for the major. Yes. Yes. Wild U is awesome and so fun. And I'll make sure I put it in the description box below if you guys want to go check it out. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> y'all. Okay. Comment. Oh, wait, um, you have a question for me. I have a question for you, and now seems like a good time to ask it. So we were talking that we're both Enneagram sevens and that like monotony is not our thing. So do you start each day with a daily plan? No. So how do you do it? Do you like do you, in terms of like my planner, like with a plan in mind or like, well, or in, and also like the mental aspect of it too, you know, like, so one time in high school, I was sitting next to this cheerleader at lunch and we were talking about our nightly routines in high school guys. I don't, I mean, <laughs> who was I? And she was like, the, the first, the last thing I think about before I go to sleep every night is what I'm going to wear tomorrow. And I looked at her and I was like, really? She's like, yes, I get in bed. I lay down. 
I close my eyes. I think about all where tomorrow and I go to sleep. I was like, that is just a fascinating evening routine. I mean, I remember that like 25 years later, <laughs> but some people plan the night before. That's okay. what I'm saying. Oh, when do okay. You plan? okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So usually okay. the night before it, and it depends on if it's a long day and I'm tired, I'll do it in the morning, but I'll usually write out, okay, what do I need to do today? Like, what do I need to do for work? And then what do I need to do? Like mm -hmm. at home personally. And then mm -hmm. that's pretty much like, in terms of my planning routine. And then sometimes there's days where I just, I'm like, we're not gonna do any of this on this list. <laughs> I need to rest. Um, mm -hmm. Usually I try, like I take about maybe five to 10 minutes either mm -hmm. at night or when I like, not even right in the morning, it's usually after my quiet time or after mm -hmm. I work out that I'll look and be like, okay, what do I have to do today? So mm -hmm. that's usually how I do it. And you, you kind of figure it out then. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what about the days when you just have decided you're not going to do any of that? What do you do on those days? Um, usually, <laughs> it's confession <better>. time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you normally it's probably Netflix or Hulu. I'll turn on one uh -huh. of my favorite TV shows. But uh -huh. lately, because I have realized that I, I personally, I'm like, man, I, I, I can't binge watch like I would like to. Most people can do it. I just can't. I just I leave afterwards all of my feelings after binge watching that I'm like, I just can't do this. I can't do this to myself. It's like an emotional roller coaster, depending on the show. Right, um, so right. lately it's been like, I'll take the whole day and I'll just go play with my journals and like put uh -huh. on like cartoons. <laughs> I like do what? And I'll just, I'll just journal. I'll just journal. I'll just okay. like, and it's not even that I'll be writing, but I'll like do layouts. Like, so I'll like just draw like the journal spread. So then when I'm journaling throughout the week, they're already uh -huh. created for me. So that's what I've been doing for the past couple of weeks. Um, okay. My, at least for myself. Okay. So like, are you talking about bullet journaling? Mm -hmm. I think okay. So you'll, you'll go like create the page and then later you can go in and fill it out. So you're mm -hmm. just enjoying the, the creative process of getting your layout. So do you try yeah. different layouts and stuff? Yeah. And so okay, this cool. is why I'm up at light, late at night because I'm scrolling, looking at other people's layouts and stuff. Uh -huh, and I'm uh -huh. like, Ooh, that's so cool. I want to try that. Or I'm like, Ooh, uh -huh. that's simple. I don't have to do a lot of work for that. I can try that. Cause, uh -huh. and it's like, so that's literally what I've been doing on Saturdays. I'll turn on Disney plus and feel uh -huh. like a little kid again. Cause again, it's fun. And uh -huh. yeah. I'll just, like, go to town and I'll draw and I feel like an artist. And yes. sometimes I bring out the stickers. Sometimes I bring out my yeah. watercolors. Mm -hmm. Fun. Well, that that actually sounds like a productive veg day. <laughs> so, <laughs> or I used to call my mom. I used, nine out of ten times, and I also call my mom and talk to her. Yeah, but yeah. no reason. Y'all talk. Y'all talk for a long time. Oh yeah, I. Yeah, I don't know if this is normal or not, but I, y'all, I talk to my mom maybe like five times a week. Mm. She's my best That's friend. Sweet. So I like. That's sweet. Yeah, that's my best friend. I hope I have that kind of relationship with my daughter. Yeah. That's cool. I'm the daughter that still dresses up with her mom and wear matches. Oh, <laughs> how cute. Yes. So I love it. That also, I'll also avoid doing some of my work just to talk to her. Yeah. Trying to procrastinate. Cause yeah. Like, no, this doesn't look like fun. I don't want to do it. But mm -hmm. yes. When yes. you say work, are you talking about the whole planning together thing, like running all this? Um, or are you talking about like, yeah, so two, it's the work that I do with Moxie Life, and then it's okay. also the freelance work that I still do, and then sometimes it's prepping for planning together and making sure the live and the graphics are all taken care of and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, it's like details, all, all the things. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you have to figure it out for sure. I understand that. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I have a question for you. Okay. You're all you. One thing that you said that struck me is like you felt like anyone could be creative. You're like, yeah. and if not, they just haven't found it. So my question for you is, what's the first step to finding our creative selves for people who are just like, I ain't creative. Like, mm -hmm. or maybe mm -hmm. I'm lost. Like, what should I do to find that creative self again? Mm -hmm. I once heard a wa an author say, "Whiskey and Adderall." <laughs> <laughs> How do you write a book? Whiskey and Adderall. Um, that's not the answer, by the way. Not that I've tried it, but I just it doesn't it doesn't work. Hang on, I have my husband needs to take the dog outside. Hey, dog outside. She's just standing there scratching. She's like, Whitney, why aren't you taking me outside? Um, 
So steps to finding your creative self. I would say, um, think about creativity as like a problem solving thing. So the next time, I, I would say first, a lot of times people say like, I'm not creative. Mm -hmm. But we've all solved a problem before in our lives. Like we've all been presented with a situation that we have to utilize resources and exercise our minds. We're using our creativity when we're doing that. So that's the first thing I would say is like, stop saying you're not a creative person. You are, mm. you know, you're just using that creativity to solve problems. Like just because you can't draw a stick figure does not mean you're not creative. Like you're a rocket scientist in some capacity. Like God has given you a gift and you can your combination of things are going to be unlike anybody else's. Like you have fairy dust in your fingers. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but it just may not draw stick figures, but it will do something. And so a lot of times people also say, um, like they'll say to me, like I'll get accused of like the serial entrepreneur thing, like flitting around like a butterfly, like touching everything, but actually doing nothing. And I just, I, you know, I used to be embarrassed about that and like, you know, felt shame. Mm -hmm. And last year I just started kind of, maybe it was like a year and a half ago. I just started kind of denying that. Like, no, like this is who God made me to be. And, and God has made us all creative. I know that because we've all solved problems. And so I just would say that that's the first step is like, quit mm -hmm. saying you're not creative. You are. Ugh. <laughs> You're y'all. I hope you heard that. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes. I love this. Yep. A good way of saying it. I suppose I'm creative and function. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, it isn't living yeah. art and music. It's math and science and problem solving mm -hmm. in daily life. Yes, I love this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's, okay. there's also, um, are there other questions I need to answer? Or do you want Oh, you're good. You're good. Okay. Um, there's a guy named Scott Belsky who wrote a book called Making Things Happen. And he posed this, he poses a formula for creativity because you'll meet like the most creative people. Think about the most creative person you know. Um, and he says that the formula is your creativity times your execution skills equals your imprint on the world, basically. I'm paraphrasing. So you can be like a level 10 creative. But if your execution skills are level zero, your output is still zero. Then you are a butterfly flitting around and not actually producing anything. Mm -hmm. You're probably just a consumer at that point. You're just a consumer of other people's creation instead of sharing your your problem solution, your creative solutions, the solutions yeah. that you come up with things to the world. Um, and But you can be like a five creative and a five on execution and you're like a level 25 executor. Like you're actually putting like a level 25 of problem and solution out there in the world. So you can be the most creative person. You can have all like the art and science, maybe you can sing and dance and everything. Um, and everybody's gonna be jealous of you. But if you can't harness all of that, that the world labels as creativity into something, into something that you can share with the world, your output is still zero. So Ooh. there's an argument against um, and that's why we like when people walk around, I, I try not to hold my ideas too closely. Um, like right now I am like blinders on. I don't look at other planner companies. I don't look at what anybody else. Is. I do look at other interior designers just because I like all that stuff so much, but mm -hmm. I'm also not trying to build anything in that, that space. I do like helping people with their houses, but, um, my primary business is, is planners mm -hmm. and, um, oh my gosh, I chased a rabbit. Now I'm off. But now I'm left field. It's okay. You, you were talking <laughs> about, because we were talking about like creativity and execution. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just all about output. I'm focused on output right now. Like what can I create? Don't get consumed with what other people yes. are doing because it messes up with your execution. Yes, exactly. I got to create instead of consume. You, I got to stop, stop scrolling and unless I'm going to use it for something to, you know, create. So anyway. Okay. I just feel like this is something I need to hear because literally I just seen, I, I was watching a YouTube video and someone was sharing like, you know, how their uh, professor was saying, you know, you know, being like they were, she was an art major. So she was like, you know, as artists, like we need to make sure we're creating more 
and not mm-hmm. consuming, like making sure we're creating more than we're consuming. Yeah. And, and then you're talking about this and people in the comments, I'm just like, maybe I, I like, this is something I clearly am is really tugging on my heart. And so mm-hmm. my last, well, one of my last questions is mm-hmm. how do you in a way balance that consuming versus like the consuming and creating, like how do you balance? Mm-hmm. Like I'm allowing myself to consume this much mm. myself to permit, like, you, like how do you balance that? You know, especially mm-hmm. in this kind of world where we're constantly thrown with all yeah. things. I don't know. I, I mean, about you asked me when we were talking pre-show, pre-show, um, <laughs> what my word of the year was. And I was like, I don't have a word of the year, but I do focus on different words from time to time. And about six months ago, I just like a light bulb moment came on. I was like, I need to practice prolific. Like prolific has been my word for six months. That's like, like I'm, uh, I'm going to put some dogs out there, you know, like yeah. you don't bat whatever. I, I, my husband's always like, Whitney, don't use sports metaphors, <laughs> but you're not going to bat a hundred every time might be a terrible metaphor. Um, so, you know, but you're just going to have to create some ugly to figure out what works and what is going to add beauty and value to people's lives. And Mm so that's kind of what I've just been, that's what I've been focused on is like trying to talk to people and connect and really want to share my message about heart goals with the world and, um, want to do it creatively, like want to do it in a way that gives glory to God, frankly. So those are my gifts and just got to scratch an itch. I don't know. (laughs) I just love that. I love that. Okay. So my question for y'all in the comments right now, and I'm about to head to this chat real quick is one, what has been your biggest takeaway from tonight? I want to know, I want to know. And Whitney, I think that really hit home because just a lot of people are saying like, you know, I love that. Also, Natalie, I'm thinking of you. You and your family are in my prayers, um, especially your grandma, like, you know, thinking of you. Um, but a lot of people said that they loved your creativity and your your execution like that. I'm like, I'm thinking about that. I'm like, that's really good. Shauna said, oh, my goodness, I'm an aimless butterfly. You got to get that output up, Shonda. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. And I said, that is why I love the planning, planner community, sharing and executing. Yes. 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 Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, this is kind of the point of life. I want to contribute more than I consume. Oh, I think I we maybe all are feeling a little bit that way right now, just because of where we are in the world. You know, mm-hmm. I just think we see people hurting and we want to, we want to help. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it's just so, you know, it's easy to think like, especially as someone who's really creative that, you know, a lot of times it just gets looked down upon like, Oh, you can draw whoopee, you know, like go solve world hunger. But I, I, it's all connected. And I think we're all in this spot where we're all hurting. We've, We've got friends and family that are hurting. And I do think that creativity can be a therapy out you know, I think maybe that might be our souls telling us that we need to create more beauty and put it out there in the world. I don't know. Yeah, I love that. I love that so much. Um, and Whitney, I want to know, this is my last question for you before we okay. hear everyone's biggest takeaways tonight. But okay. what are some things that have been helping you keep yourself organized internally and externally? Uh, like, I mean, I know it sounds cliche, but the heart goals thing mm-hmm. um, for sure helps me externally. This is, this is just, I got myself a housekeeper for Christmas and she comes once a week and it is amazing. We have three kids mm-hmm. keeping up with them is, and, and as I'm working more, I mean, my, my job in the past year has gone full time. Um, and so that is, that's what's helping me keep organized is I love that. just getting help. the house clean once a week. Yeah. Ask for help when you need it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You I don't will. have to do it all on your own. Sorry. Okay. No, yes. no you're good. Listen, <laughs> I'm like, Whitney, you can talk all day and I'll sit here and listen. <laughs> I'm going to shut up. Here's some of the people's biggest takeaways from tonight, just because you have really just encouraged us all. Uh, Claudia says you encourage her to focus on one thing. 
Jeanette says, creativity is the ability, is ability, but also output. Um, we got Shauna said, create more than you consume. We got super inspiring, super wonderful. Jennifer said, focusing on creating more than you consume. I can't, my mom's, I just can't call my mom. I just feel, we, I can't say her name. My mom said, love the heart acronym. <laughs> Hi, Brenda. <laughs> Uh, Planner Wire said, so many takeaways, live my goals. Yes. Live your goals. Yes. Yeah. Plain Simple said, I needed this tonight. This week has been pretty down, wondering if the things that I have shared have been meaningful and inspiring others. Well, I'm going to tell you as someone who consumes your content, they have. You just posting your planner spreads, like bring so much joy to me and, and spark creativity for me. And I love watching your YouTube channel. Like you, Yes. Your oh. is beautiful and inspiring. So I'm, I'm going to check it out. Yes, planning it simple. Okay, I'm checking it out. Nicole Alexis Plan said, heart goals. Also, your goals won't pass you by, but it will come to you when it's time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, Sadie said, create before I consume. Live my goals. Yes. Yeah. Um, And then we have be bold and fearless with goals and dreams. Yes. We also got prolific. I don't know if I said that right, if I can say that correctly. <laughs> um, yeah. Cynthia but, said, love the heart goals, relinqu relinquishing some control and accepting some risks so I can allow God to do his work and be more mindful of my output. Y'all, these are such great takeaways. No, oh, girl. Um, hand complaints that creativity is vital, especially during tough times. Yes, yes, yes. We got, yes, be the beauty you wish to see in the world. Ooh. I just... Yes. Yeah. This yeah. right here. I think, I mean, if we're talking about designing a life that you love, I think uh -huh. this, is this is the answer for me is being the beauty that you yeah. wish to be in the world. <sighs> okay. Mm -hmm. And then we got mm -hmm. another one. Last one we see is take away smart goals versus heart goals. I've never been able to do smart goals for my personal life. And I'm having a aha moment as to why. Yay. Yay. I love hearing that y'all. Okay, Whitney, where can everyone keep up with you and stay connected with you? I mean, big that I'm on Instagram. I uh, I'm 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 on Instagram. It's me. So <laughs> uh, don't send me customer service questions because I don't know the answers to that. Mm -hmm. I will send you to hello at WhitneyEnglish.com. But if you want to connect with me, I am on Instagram at Whitney English. Yes, yes, yes. And I will say, I don't I didn't tell you this, but you inspired me to get a basket to just keep my laptop. Oh, yes. And all yeah. the and I just carry it around from the house. Like it's the yes. best thing ever. Like yes. It's like a, my a basket for everything. And everything in a basket. I got I've got two baskets. I can't look <laughs> them up. They're too big, but I love a good container. I organize. Here's another takeaway. Organize first, decorate second. There you go. That's my design. That's my interior design tip for you today. <laughs> Organize first, design second. Okay. Great, okay. Yeah. And on that note, y'all, thank you so much you. for joining me tonight. And y'all are just so wonderful. And I can't wait to see you guys back here next week. Same time, same place. Thank you so much, Whitney, for joining me. Thank you, guys. Bye.